Blurry by Asshole in the Audience by T. Gadomsky. This is the uninformed, uncalled for, unwelcomed, metafictional analysis of the play Blizzard by Jared Reynolds. <clears throat> I'm the asshole. Blizzard by Jared Reynolds. Characters, man, the father, early mid-30s. Woman, the mother, early mid-30s. Child, the child, no older than 12. Setting, the living room of a home in the middle of a blizzard. Time, evening. <clears throat> <clears throat> Scene one, a darkened room. Ooh, spooky. There are books, <laughs> blankets, food, and other supplies scattered across the floor. There is a lit lantern. Woman and child are seated at the lantern, reading a book. The man is staring off, watching the storm. Sound of blizzard can be heard. What's that? Wind? And they all lived happily ever after. The end. Bet that's not true. Mommy, can you read me another one? Man, you are 12 years old. Read your damn so. <sighs> I think that three is enough for tonight. Three? Mom's got that much free time? Damn. But mommy. Grow up. It's okay. I can read her one more story while you get some rest. Why are you enabling her, Carl? You're a POS. I already know it. Thank you. <laughs> Is there anything you want me to read you? Something new this time. Man, that's three stories a night. We ran out years ago. Well, we may have read everything we have, but I'll, I'll go take a look. See? Man shuffles through some books, looking for something new to read. Reading the names of the books, he finds and commenting on them. Commenting on them? They're your books, bro. What the fuck are you commenting on? Use a variety of well-known children's stories, young adult novels, and maybe a textbook or, or scholarly work. Finally, he pulls out an instruction manual and crosses back to the child. Oh, this will be good. What every child wants to hear at night. How daddy put together the lamp from Ikea. Here we go. Something new. Come here. Lamp and appliance time. 125 <laughs> VAC. 15 amps, 60 hertz. 1,875 watts. I was right! A fucking lamp! <laughs> also, I don't know shit about lamps, but... Aren't most bulbs like 75 watts or something? Hot damn it, 1,800 watts, I could cook a toaster strudel. Is this a happy story, Daddy? No. I, uh, well, I believe it is, yes. Don't lie to this poor girl. In fact, as long as you follow it correctly, no one should get hurt. Gee, I wonder if that's foreshadowing or anything. Is that why we're still here, even though it's snowing a lot outside? Maybe my grammar is bad, but shouldn't it be because it is snowing? Also, is what why we're still here? Because Daddy lies to us? Yes, probably. Yes, it is. The man on the radio told us to stay inside, so as long as we do, no one will get hurt. Really nailing in the foreshadowing by mimicking Dad's line two seconds later, huh? Well done. Good. I love happy endings where no one gets hurt. Christ, how many times are we going to hear that phrase? Warning. To prevent serious injury, one, indoor use only. Keep dry. Do not touch while wet. Two, 1,875 watts maximum. We're going to roast some motherfucking turkey. <laughs> Do not exceed. Three, read manual before use. Four, keep away from children. Five, only... Daddy, it says to keep away from children. Is it okay that you're reading this to me? Oh my God, for Christ's sake, kid, the lamp, not the fucking manual, you moron. <laughs> Maybe you should keep it away. Wouldn't want her to start chewing on it or something. Of course it is. There's nothing to worry about. Five, only plug into 125 VAC outlet. Six, people with pacemakers should consult their physician before use. Electromagnetic fields in close proximity to heart pacemaker could cause pacemaker interference or pacemaker failure. Is that true? Are lamps bad for pacemakers? We better tell Granny. During that last passage, probably around the time man starts using big words like pacemaker or electromagnetic, child should yawn and fall asleep. Man realizes this and stops reading, puts the books down, and grabs a blanket and pillow for child. Maybe it's just me, but the first half of the stage direction should have been before the previous line. 
Nothing like telling a reader that the kid is beginning to fall asleep after it's already happened. Good night. What was that? It was probably just wind blowing through the branches. <clears throat> sure didn't sound like it. Are, are we safe in here? No. What do you mean? Hello, the blizzard? We've been trapped indoors with no power for two days now. Do you think it'll be over soon? And what about the tree? It already crushed the top floor when it came down. What's stopping it from breaking through the ceiling and crushing us? Hey, we're gonna be okay. The blizzard should be over by tomorrow evening. That's what they said on the radio this morning. Are we staying away from saying TV so this can, be, uh, this can take place in any period with radios? If so, perhaps we should remove the table lamp that can also cook dinner. We have enough food and water to last us a few more days. Besides, we have a strong house that can take a beating. Remember last summer when we were power washing the walls and the power washer head popped off the hose? Maybe it's one of those, like, it's not transient period pieces, and this guy's just a big fan of radio. Anyone know when the power washer was invented? That thing shot out and it crashed into the side of the house like a speeding bullet, and it just bounced off like a rubber ball. You mean when I was power washing the walls? Aha, uh -huh, the first funny thing to happen in this play. Because you were scared you were going to break a window. Don't forget how you screamed when it popped. <laughs> Sometimes you get as frightened as a puppy on the 4th of July. Can you even say that phrase without a country accent? <laughs> One day you'll have to face your fears and do something you're scared of. I can't tell if she's still poking fun at him or if this discussion took a spin into how shitty a father he is to child. That's not the point. The point is that the tree has already fallen. If it were going to fall through the ceiling, it would have when it first fell, right? It's settled. It isn't going anywhere. We just have to be careful. The storm will pass, the power will come back on, we'll get the tree removed, and we'll rebuild our house as if nothing ever happened. We'll make it through this. Now go back to sleep and I'll check the radio. The only thing Dad loves in this house after woman, child, and manual. To see if there are any updates on the storm, okay? Okay. The child stirs and looks up at his parents. Aha, a boy child. Gender reveal time. I thought we were going through letting the actor be whoever they want, but guess not. Nothing better than a late stage gender reveal. The child stirs and looks up at his parents, blissfully unaware of the situation. Mommy, I'm cold. Come here, you can sleep next to mommy tonight. The child grabs the blanket and pillow and carries it to woman when the child sits back down. She, oh boy, she's gender fluid. You go, child. She starts to cough a little. The man and woman share a worried glance before <clears throat> woman lays down. The two fall asleep. The man grabs a battery-operated radio. Correction, the man grabs his favorite item in the whole house and moves to a corner to avoid waking up woman and child. He turns it on. Everything will be okay. This just in, famous Olympian Bobson Dugnut is and just like that, the baby panda was re Janet, my love, it is time for you to come Do they still have storyline programming on the radio? I mean, I don't know. I guess if anyone would know, it would be man, Dad. Storm is taking a different path than meteorologists originally predicted. Having slowed down and turned north, the massive storm system may keep dumping snow and heavy winds on northern towns for up to three more days. Statewide parking bans are still in effect and driving is severely discouraged as driving winds and blowing snow makes visibility zero. All citizens are being advised to stay indoors. This has been an alert by the emergency alert system. Everything is going to be okay. But everything was not going to be okay. What did the radio say? It, uh, it said that everything will be over tomorrow, as planned. Another lie from man. Good show, old chap. Bullshit. So, what do we do? There's nothing we can do. Officials say to stay inside. It's a real shitstorm out there. I don't know if this is supposed to make someone chuckle or not, but I guess we'll see. We need to tell her. Tell her what? Tell her what's going on. What? No, we can't. She, 
She's too young. She'll get scared. Is 12 too young to tell her that global warming has trapped you in a never-ending snowstorm? Perhaps. You can't keep coddling her like this. We can't just keep lying to her. With the way this storm is moving, we'll be stuck in here for another week before they can clear the snow and get us out. Besides, you heard her coughing. She's getting sick again. You already know how weak she is. Very surprising flip from lying dad into we should tell her everything dad. Also, love finding out she's sick as fuck without a single hint of it previously in the story. What if... No, don't you dare say it. You said it yourself. Everything is going to be fine. We just have to wait it out. Of course, you're right. But we still need to tell her. And then, man said she was sick, and it was so. <coughs> tell me what? Oh, it's, it's uh, nothing. I think Go you back should to... know that... No, we can't tell her just yet, okay? She's just a child. The child! Well, she's going to find out sooner or later. No, it's best if we just let her be. But what if something happens like... that? Oh no, she's burning up. The coughing has gotten worse. This, this isn't good. Um, okay, I'll go see if we have any more of her medicine. Mommy, I don't feel too good. I, I know, sweetie. Daddy's gonna get you some medicine. You'll, you'll be okay. Just relax and try to stay warm. <coughs> <coughs> Mommy, some red stuff came out. Is that bad? It's blood! You're freaking 12 years old and you never seen blood before? Uh, no, hun. It, it isn't bad. <laughs> no, Mommy is the liar. It might hurt a little bit, but when your father gets back, he'll give you your medicine and you'll feel better. We don't have any more of her medicine in the other room. She's bleeding, Spence. <gasps> Gasp. A name. Also, I like that here in the script, it's spelled S-P-E-N-S-E, -E, insinua insinuating that his full name is Suspense rather than Spencer. Man. Stopping dead in his tracks. Yikes. Maybe that's not the best time to use that word. What? She... She's coughing up blood. What do we do? We, uh... Grab some more blankets and keep her warm. Keep her warm, hydrated, and resting. That should help. As soon as the storm is over, I'll go out and get some medicine. Suddenly, a large crash is heard. Shit. That one sounded real, didn't it? What the hell was that? I'll give you one guess, mommy woman. I think it was the tree. It must have crashed through the ceiling of the kitchen. The extra blankets, food, water, all of it. Gone. Gee, that's a pretty big assumption that you're hanging on the life of your dying family. What do we do? Uh, I, I don't know. There, there isn't anything we can do. I... Oh, uh, how typical of you. Is now the time, Martha? The official said this. There's nothing we can do. It's always the same with you. You never think for yourself. You rely on other people. Other people read the radio. You rely on other people to think for you. There has got to be something we can do. I, I have to go and find some more food then. We won't have enough in here to last until the end of the storm. There, there's the convenience store right down the road. I can, I can go through a window or something, grab anything that they have left and bring it back. I'll pick up some medicine on the way. We had her next prescription waiting for us, so it should still be there. What? Spence, no. With an S again. So Spencer. That's not what I meant. You said it yourself. It's too dangerous out there. You can't possibly go out in this storm. Oh, let him go. He hasn't done anything helpful this whole time. I don't have another choice. She's coughing up blood, for Christ's sake. I like how we're not telling her, but we keep yelling that she's coughing up blood. Unless we're all under the assumption that not only has she not seen blood before, but she also has no idea what the word means either. Hmm. Without food or medicine, she doesn't stand a chance. Neither do we. Don't you even dare think that. Open your eyes, Liz! Yeah, Liz! Also, hey, look at that. Another name. We're two for three. I wonder if we can get the whole set. She's sick. She needs help. If I don't go and get her something, she's going to die. Mommy, what does he mean by that? Please don't, Spence. We need you. We, we need you. Ah! He changed his name! It's with a C now. We must now call him Sus Spence. Don't leave us now. Trust me, honey. He left a long time ago. You always told me that I would have to face my fears one day. Do something that I'm scared of. Well, I'm scared. I'm terrified. But she... she needs help. Give me a name! I need a name! I can't just sit around this time. You said that as long as we listen to the man on the radio, then nobody will get hurt. It's like that lamp from the story. This fucking kid. Well, 
Sometimes you have to break the rules and hope for the best. And go against every fucking thing I've ever said to you and your mother. You'll be back soon, though. Right, Daddy? No, this'll go well. Of course. I'll be back before you know it. I promise. Hey, the old lion dad we know and love. Mommy, am I gonna be all right? Yes, sweetie. Of, of course you are. And what about Daddy? Is he gonna be okay? Uh, yes. Everything is gonna be okay. The woman and child sit together in silence, listening to the storm as it builds again. Lights fade. End of play. Dun, dun, dun!